So Nikki Haley dropped out of the race back in March, but yet people are still going out of their way to show up and vote for her over Donald Trump. And I really believe that once the dust settles on this whole 2024 election, I believe people are going to look back and realize that the Nikki Haley factor was indeed a real thing. I mean, even Newsmax is starting to catch on to it. Take a look at this clip. I think the Nikki Haley factor is real. You look at it, Indiana as a small state. By the way, it's Mike Pence's home state. It's a red state, went for Trump in 16, went for Trump in 2020, 11 electoral votes, so not a huge, a huge number there. But still, if he's missing out on 100,000 votes in a state like that, and then 155,000 in Pennsylvania two weeks ago, you can't tell me that he doesn't have a problem with Nikki Haley voters. Now, And when Donald Trump was actually confronted and asked about this, this was his response. Nikki Haley attained 16% of the vote. Are you concerned about that number? And what do you say to those voters? Well, that's a very small number. All of those people are going to come to me because what, what's, first of all, what's their choice? Well, the clear choice here is Joe Biden, but that clearly went right over top of Donald Trump's head because his ego is so big that he can't stop and pause and say to himself, hold on a minute. I've got 100,000 people coming out to vote against me. Now, in his mind, that's a very small number, okay? But that many people got up that day and went out of their way to come vote against you. What makes you think that you're going to change their mind between now and November when you're going out there doing the same shtick over and over? The same shtick that they're so tired of seeing. That's why they're out there voting. And you need independence. You need moderates. You can't win the, the general election without them. You're doing nothing to appeal to them, and you're ignoring the fact that Nikki Haley is still getting voters even after she dropped out. A lot of people, this is going over their head. No one really views Nikki Haley as a threat to anything, but I tell you, when this is all over, I really believe we'll be talking more about it. I talk all the time about how I wish there was a voice of reason in the Republican Party. And while I still wouldn't vote for Nikki Haley because there's too many things we still disagree on, uh, she's absolutely spot on in this next clip. Take a look at it. Ambassador, you were the ambassador to the United Nations during the Trump administration. Uh, are you and the former president on the same page when it comes to Russia? Not at all. I mean, it's amazing to me how weak in the needs he is when it comes to Putin, because you look at the fact he is yet to say anything about Navalny's death, which Putin murdered him. It's what he does to his political opponents. He's yet to say anything about seizing Russian assets and allowing that money to go to Ukraine. Why would you not want to have those assets seized? It's sitting in Congress. He should be calling for that. He doesn't talk about anything. All he does is go on late night rants talking about his court cases. And Steve, that's the problem. We have Russia sitting there doing things. They're now surrounding the Baltics, which if they go and invade the Baltics, that those are NATO countries that puts America at war. We have to prevent war. We've got China doing these cyber attacks. We're seeing all of these things happen, and Trump's doing late-night rants about his court cases. He's going to be in court for the rest of the year. We can't be distracted. But more of that, that's right. why I continue to say if Donald Trump is the nominee, he can't win. He won't win a general election. And the focus we need to have is how do we protect Americans? How do we prevent war? How do we get the border secure? How do we get our economy back on track? Not his personal grievances. Sure. You know, I'm going to save that clip and I'm going to play it after the election because there's going to be a whole lot of people going, I don't know why this happened. I can't figure this one out. How'd he lose again? It must have been rigged. No, you guys just wasn't listening to what was really going on. Nikki Haley's right there. He cannot win this thing going out there and just talking about his grievances. How is that going to win over independent and moderate voters that he needs? All that's doing is entertaining his base. All that's doing is keeping those people happy because they're caught up in the Donald Trump story. And at the end of the day, all they care about is owning the libs. I can't count the times that someone leaves a comment or messages me and says, I can't wait to see your face once Trump gets reelected. I can't wait to see you cry. I can't wait to see all you liberals just crumble when he gets reelected. It's going to be so glorious to look on your face. That's all they're about. But that kind of stuff has no substance. That kind of stuff does not help them to pay their bills or to feed their families or to ensure that their daughters have rights going forward. It doesn't do anything for human rights. We're over here on this side of the fence trying to work on the issues at hand, and you've got a guy over here who is just going out and talking about nothing but his grievances, and he's got this little cult following going around now wearing diapers and waving all these ridiculous flags in the air and laughing and hee-hawing it up, 
and then when they lose again, they're going to be shocked as to why they lost. Well, we're trying to tell you it's because we're tired of your bullshit. We're tired of seeing the same stuff over and over. I, I'm so tired of like sitting here and playing clips of Donald Trump and going, was that today or was that yesterday? Because he said the same thing. You can take, I, I have literally almost used a clip from a month ago because I thought it was because he's still saying the same shit. And I've been like, wait a minute. Oh, he said that in April. Oh, okay. Well, let me find where he said it most recently so I can be up to date. He's a broken record. He's just out there saying the same thing over and over, over and over, and hoping that will stick. And I've never seen anything like it. I've never seen someone lose, then continue to just double down even harder and not do anything to change up their image, not do anything to change up their game at all or their strategy at all. If nothing else, he's just leaning in to the crazy even harder. And yeah, that appeals to that base. That appeals to them. And they're loud and they're obnoxious. But what you got to remember is there's a whole lot of people out there who don't talk politics at all. I, I know a lot of people. I have people in my family who say to me, I don't talk politics. I don't bring it up. I have friends who's like, man, I don't talk politics. It's not my thing. But guess what they do do? They vote. They go out and they cast their vote. And they're reasonable people who's working hard every day trying to figure out how to pay their bills, feed their families. And that rhetoric, that Jerry Springer-style bullshit that appeals to some people doesn't appeal to anyone with a lick of common sense. And so there's a whole lot of people, because what's funny, they see all the loudness. They see the, the WWE rhetoric on TV, and they go, hey, hey, that's bullshit, man. He had these big rallies. He had all these people out there waving flags and cheering for him. Joe Biden didn't have none of that, man. I didn't see nobody getting that excited about Joe Biden. That's because we're not in a cult. That's because we don't get caught up in that kind of rhetoric. We just go vote. And there's a lot of people who don't even talk about none of this, and they go vote. And so... When the numbers come in and Donald Trump loses again and they all have a meltdown, we're going to look back and realize, yeah, the, the Nikki Haley factor was real.